Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. Forward, please. Mind the door. What? Are you being served, sir? I'm Humphreys, and I'm free. Are you being served, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or spotty. We've also got some see-through that really tan your... Beach wear. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around the back. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic mag. Are you being served, sir? I'm Humphreys, and I'm free. Are you being served, sir? What would you like to see? Are you being served, madam? No, not at the moment. I'm looking for a dressing gown for my husband. Ah, Mr. Bankovitz, you free? I'm sorry, Captain Wagstaff. I'm stretching a bowler hat for a customer. Can I help you, madam? No, Mr. Randall, I did not call you forward. Please go back to your counter. Certainly. <laughs> uh, Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. <laughs> this lady requires a dressing gown for her husband. Yes, what did Madam have in mind? What's our wedding anniversary? <laughs> Mr. Randall, robes, please. And Captain Wagstaff, am I senior enough to assist Mr. Humphreys? <clears throat> If Mr. Humphreys wishes your services, he may have them. Do you wish my assistance, Mr. Humphreys? I think it would be invaluable, Mr. Randall. The robe's coming up. Thank you. Now, <laughs> oh, madam, this is our complete range. Here we are. How tall is the lucky gentleman? Hmm. Well, he's about your size. Well, he's not that lucky, then, is he? <laughs> <laughs> what length did you have in mind? We have knee-high, thigh-high, and eye-eye. I like them round my ankles. I expect he does as well. <laughs> Very nice. I'm never sure what men like. No, it is a puzzle sometimes. <laughs> Speaking as a man, which do you think? Well, I would say... Uh... <laughs> this is my favourite. We also have a fabulous range of fun slogans. You can have embroidered on the back at very short notice. Yes. These are very popular with honeymooners. I did it my way. Or anything you can do, I can do better. Oh, here's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> we have a really good one for him, that we, Mr. Humphreys. <clears throat> we do indeed, Mr. Randall. Little things mean a lot. <laughs> Thank you, madam. You can buy the cotton wool to stuff in them on the ground floor. <laughs> Miss Buxton. Yes, Captain Wagstaff. There's still no sign of Mrs. Crawford. Well, she told you she was going to be late because she was moving flat. You should have given her the day off like she asked. Or she's going to be in a real state when she gets here. <laughs> Good morning, Captain Wagstaff. <coughs> I'm sorry I'm late, but the furniture removers have only just left. I see you followed the van with your old cock linnet. <laughs> Lucky to get a van at all with all these transport strikes. Mrs. Crawford, there is a strict rule that staff may not bring pets to the store. Well, you know how clumsy these removal men are, and I wasn't going to have any of them handling my pussy. <laughs> and I suggest you don't go near her because she's in a very disturbed state. Oh, I happen to be very good with animals. <laughs> I did warn you. It's bitten me. Well, she hasn't had a breakfast. I invite you to put your menagerie out of sight and keep it there. Uh, Miss Buxton, will you pop these in the, in the fitting room, please? Oh, don't be frightened, little pussy. It's only your Auntie Cheryl. <laughs> uh, must be a great weight of your mind to have completed your removal. What do you mean, completed it? All I've done is to have seen the stuff on the van, and all they've got to do is dump it, and then I've got to sort it out, and I should have had three days off for this. Yes, uh, so believe me, Mrs. Crawford, I tried, but Mr. Dunkley wouldn't hear of it. <sighs> Ladies' intimate apparel... I said, ladies' intimate apparel. <laughs> All right, then. Knickers and knocker covers. <laughs> <laughs> Give that to me, Miss Buxton. Uh, Mrs Crawford, supervisor here. May I be of assistance? You what? <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Armitage. It's the van driver. <laughs> what? What do you mean it's not there? <laughs> There's been a what? <coughs> a land 
landslide? <laughs> There's been a landslide and my new flat's disappeared. <laughs> well, what am I going to do with all my furniture? That's not a very helpful suggestion. <laughs> no, of course I can't take it back. The new people will have moved in. Oh, can't it stay on the van? Oh, he's got another job at lunchtime. Well, look, I, I need some time, a few minutes, just to think this over. Look, uh, what's your number? I'll phone you back. Oh, yep, 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 I've got it. Oh. Well, what am I supposed to do? Of course, I suppose I could always stay at a motel. Unless one of my friends offered me accommodation. <laughs> of course, I would always help anybody else if they were stuck. Yes, well, I'd like to invite you to my home, Mrs Crawford. Oh, that's very kind of you, Captain Wagstaff. <laughs> Isn't he a gent? Unfortunately, Mrs Wagstaff's away visiting her sister. We'd be alone in the house and <laughs> there might be a lot of talk. From all accounts, that's all there would be. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> what a pity I've got those three Vietnamese nuns staying with me. <laughs> Can't move in my place for rosary beads and walks. Well, I'm afraid I haven't got a spare bed, Mrs. Crawford, but uh, if you're really stuck, you could always uh, snuggle up with me. Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Randall. I mean, uh, what would you do if you was to wake up the next morning and find me lying in bed next to you? <laughs> Probably give up drink. <laughs> Well, I had a word with young Mr. Bone, and if you've your predicament, he's prepared to help. And so he should. If I'd had three days off, I'd have had time to sort myself out. All you had to do was ask. I did, through Captain Wagstaff. You remember, sir. I made the suggestion in the washroom. Well, I couldn't hear very well through the door. <laughs> anyway, you should know by now that I close my ears to suggestions in the washroom. <laughs> However, in view of the mix-up, Mr. Bone has agreed you can store your effects in Department 5B, which is vacant at the moment pending refurbishing. Oh, that is kind of you, Mr. Dunkley. I'm most grateful. Well, although we're a big organisation, even we top executives have a heart. Oh, I can see that, Mr. Dunkley. I'll tell the driver where to deliver. <laughs> can I use your phone? Certainly not. Use the red phone in the canteen. <laughs> You weren't so heavy-handed, you're bruising my chest. And it's been in our family for years. I uh, thought I'd give it a bit of a polish. Well, wait till you get upstairs, and then you can spread it out the way I showed you. Uh, Mrs Crawford, what on earth is going on? All the goods lift broken down, and Mr Cocker's giving me a hand upstairs with me, for me last bits of furniture. You've been nearly two hours, Mrs Crawford. It really isn't good enough. Well, I have to sort me things out. Have you found anywhere to stay yet? No, but I've got this marvellous idea. I can stay in my flat. But you haven't got a flat. Yes, I have. There's plenty of room on that top floor. And instead of piling it up, I can set it out like it was. They've got everything up there. There's gas and there's plugs. It, it, it's self-contained. You mean you're going to stay in the store? But why not? Well, do you think they'll let you? Oh, well, I'm going to ask Mr Bone personally. All you've got to do is flutter your eyelashes and cross your legs and he's like putty. <laughs> His age is like putty all the time. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, the to see Mr Bone. Well, they can't see him now. He's asleep. Oh, but it's very important. Oh, all right. But well, wake him gently. Excuse me, Mr Bone. Uh, 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 what? Where am I? Oh, I'm sorry, I had to wake you, but Mrs Crawford wants to see you. Oh, well, uh... Tell her I can spare a few minutes. Mrs. Crawford, Mr. Bones is a senior man. <laughs> it's very kind of you to see me when you're so busy. That's all right. Sit down. Now, what can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. You want to rise? <laughs> that wasn't why I came. Good. Because I wasn't going to give you one. <laughs> I want permission to sleep on your premises. <laughs> You're very determined about this rise, aren't you? All right, then. Bring one small bag 
and your nighty. <laughs> like you'll have to go early in the morning before the servants arrive. <laughs> no, Mr. Bone, you, you don't understand. You see, what <laughs> Uh, there you are, dear, in your usual corner. Oh, isn't it lovely to be home again? Ah, don't you two start quarrelling. Oh, don't you pet my pussy. <laughs> right, there you go. I've wired you up to the juice. Your stove's working so you can boil a kettle. Oh, you're so very kind, Mr Cocker. <laughs> I seem to have everything but a front door. Yeah, hang about. Harry! Oh, Harry, give us a hand with this wall unit, will you? That's the idea. Right up. Take it easy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Left over from Bone Brothers' ideal home display. <laughs> How lovely. It's somewhere to put my doormat. Yeah, someone to put your cat out, too. <laughs> hey, uh, how many pints do you want in the morning? They don't deliver up here, do they? No, 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 no. I'll bring it up myself from the canteen kitchen. Oh, Mr. Cocker, you're so kind. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be off then. Uh, I'll see you out. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes? I forgot to connect up your telephone. Oh, can you do that? Oh, yes. I'll give you an outside and an inside line as well. Nice place you got here. Oh. Very easy to run. Yes, yeah, sir. Must be worth quite a bit too, being uh, detached. <laughs> oh, I wonder who that is. I haven't given anyone my number. Mrs. Crawford's residence, Cocker the Butler speaking. <laughs> Mr. Dunkley, it's for you. Hello. Mrs. Crawford, I'm quite aware that Mr. Bone gave you a tea break to arrange your domestic affairs, but I've called a staff meeting here in my office. If you could attend, I would appreciate it. Uh, certainly, Mr. Dunkley. Oh, I'd better hurry. He sounds really ratty. Thank you very much. Well, are we all assembled? Except Mrs. Crawford, who's been absent for most of the day. Telltale tit. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. It's necessary for you to wear a scarf and an overcoat down to the fifth floor. Well, it's very chilly in the goods lift. Now, I hope this isn't going to take long because I've left my front door off the latch. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but the train drivers are going out on strike and the bus drivers are probably be going out in sympathy. Oh, it's nice to know they've got sympathy for someone. Well, be that as it may, Mr. Bone has decided to close the store early to enable you all to get home before everything shuts down. Oh, that's very good of him. May we thank him personally? I'm afraid he left half an hour ago. <laughs> Uh, taxi's here, Mr. Dunkley. Oh, thank you. Well, good luck, everyone. <laughs> Mr. Dunkley? Are you going my way? I'm sure you'd be the first to know if he was. <laughs> Come on, hurry up or everything will be stopped. I'll nip upstairs to my flat and put the kettle on and get in front of the fire with my pussy. Isn't it lucky that none of my friends had the problem of putting me up? <laughs> <laughs> Just a sorrow <laughs> at my light when the night's out <laughs> and the flickering shadows <laughs> softly come and go <laughs> Though the heart be weary, a sad the day and long. <laughs> It's me, Mr. Humphrey. I'm in my nighty. Well, I can see that. Can I have a look? <laughs> uh, just a moment. Now, I'm sorry to take so long, but <laughs> you can't be too careful. <laughs> oh, damn, this one's stuck. Can I give you a hand? <laughs> no, I've done it now. <laughs> Come in, wipe your feet, <laughs> hang up your hat, and come 
into the parlour. Oh, I say. Now, what brings you to these parts? Well, I got on this bus, you see, and we'd only gone about 200 yards, and the conductor became all sympathetic and said, get off. <laughs> so, I thought I'd come and see my friend Mrs Crawford before I start my long, long, lonely 14-mile walk home. <laughs> Well, of course, I I suppose you could stay the night in my spare room. I expect it would be all right. Uh, look, put your feet up. Oh, thank you. I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Oh, do you know, that's just what I could do with. Oh. <laughs> you're quite different at home to when you're at work, aren't you? <laughs> Behind your counter, you're so stern. Here, you're all warm and feminine. <laughs> <laughs> I use a lot less makeup when I'm at home. No. <laughs> I'll get you a cup of tea. Can I help? No, there's no need. Oh, I don't mind. I'd like to see your kitchen. Oh, come on then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a lovely view. <laughs> I like Queensland. <laughs> it's very compact, isn't it? Oh, well, there's only me since Mr Crawford was taken from me. Was it very sudden? Yes, no warning at all. The fraud squad arrived at eight o'clock. <laughs> oh, while the kettle's boiling, I'll show you your room. Do you mind leading the way? I've forgotten where the door is. <laughs> Just round here, this is the guest toilet. Unfortunately, it's not connected up. It's very cosy. <laughs> you see, I had a, a brush salesman staying with me. He used to spend hours in there. <laughs> Planning his campaign. It's got a history then. Now, here's your little room. It's a half queen size bed. <laughs> do you sleep in the all together? Why do you ask? Well, um, I've got some pyjamas here. Oh, Mrs Crawford, you've entertained a gentleman visitor before. <laughs> oh, they belong to my lodge of the brush salesman. <laughs> you can see that with the bristles. <laughs> That's the jacket. <laughs> he was a very big man, wasn't he? On top, yes, but funnily enough, he didn't have very much below. <laughs> your tea's made by the side of your bed. There's a little telly in the cupboard, and I'll just put on the electric blanket so as to take the chill off. Oh, <laughs> Mrs Crawford, you certainly know how to look after a person. Oh, it's very nice to have someone to care for, Mr Humphreys. You seem to enjoy doing it, <laughs> which is probably as well, because the way the bus strike's going, I might be here for a week. <laughs> a week together? Well, it might not be such a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, the other day I was cleaning out our attic and I found this old calendar called The Week of Love. It said, Monday's for meeting, Tuesday's for talking, Wednesday's for wishing, Thursday's for touching, Friday's for some reason was missing. <laughs> your mother tore it here. Now, Mr Humphreys, I want you to place yourself entirely in my hands. Mrs Crawford, if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> here we are. Oh, I say. What a lovely bedspread. <laughs> Those bristles get everywhere, don't they? Just try that bed. It's very comfy. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of life in it. <laughs> there's a lot of life in me as well. <laughs> <laughs> My mother! <laughs> Whoever it is, I'll get rid of him. Oh, well, there's no rush. I haven't read this one. <laughs> Who's there? Captain Wagstaff. I'm in my nightie. I I'll just see if I can find my dressing gown. Is it a black lace one? Yes. It's hanging on the hat stand. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Cheeky devil. <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you, but the strike has hit everything. The trains and the buses have stopped running. Well, you better come in. Wipe your feet. Uh, well, I thought rather than roam the streets looking for an hotel, I'd uh, borrow your sofa. Aren't you afraid there'd be talk? As long as that's all there is. <laughs> oh, I see you've pipped me to the post. Captain Wagstaff, how very nice to see you. <laughs> you would better have the spare room. It's down there. Oh, you're most hospitable. Yeah, it looks very cosy. I thought you were going to give me the spare room. Oh, you forget, Mr. Humphreys, your accommodation problems have been sorted out. <laughs> uh, this'll do very 
Very nicely. Um, I've had a sandwich, so you needn't worry about supper. I wasn't going to. <laughs> well, if it's all the same to you, I'll turn in. Uh... The sooner the better. Good night. <laughs> oh, now, who can that be? Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Who is it? Who? Me, Mr Randall. <laughs> it's like running a damn hotel. Come in. Oh, where have you gone? I'm here, where are you? Time. Well, I can't work the lock. Oh, you lift it up. Oh. Do come in. Wipe your feet. <laughs> I suppose you want to stay as well. Well, it does appear as if fate has thrown us together, yes. Oh, no, it hasn't. You can share the spare bedroom with Captain Wagstaff. Oh, look, I don't mind keeping down on the so On second thoughts, I'll sleep with Captain Wagstaff. <laughs> oh, Mrs Crawford, I suppose... Uh, Egg and bacon is out of the question. How did you guess? I thought so. Never mind. I'll just lie down and have a good rumble. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys? Randall. Well, oh, thank heavens for that. <laughs> when the others drop off. You can come to my room. <laughs> Mrs Crawford, I think we ought to talk about this. <laughs> oh, come in, it's open. We couldn't get home. We thought you might give us shelter for the night. Oh, come in, you wipe your feet. I don't know where you're going to sleep. I've got Mr Humphreys on the sofa and Captain Wagstaff and Mr Randall are in my spare room. I'll go in with Captain Wagstaff. <laughs> Randall, you're sleeping on the floor. Oh, Marvellous, isn't it? I'll take the bath. After 30 years of marriage, one gets the knack, you know. <laughs> no, if Mr Randall puts these two armchairs together, he can sleep across them. Oh, no, he cannot. He might see you're not on the sofa. But I am on the sofa. <laughs> you won't be when the others are asleep. No. <laughs> Mrs Crawford, I think we ought to talk about this. Really. No, please. <laughs> Oh, now, who's that? With any luck, it'll be the brush salesman. <laughs> oh, don't tell me you can't go home and you want to stay tonight. Well, I hope I'm not putting you out. No, but I'm going to have to put you out. I've got no room. I've got everybody else staying here. Well, I don't mind sharing your bed. Well, that just doesn't happen to be convenient. <laughs> well, I'm not going out on them streets again. I've had four proposals between here and the bus stop, and they wasn't marriage. <laughs> Go on, get in then. I'm going to have to share with Miss Buxton. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> Are you relieved or disappointed? I'm neither one way or the other. <laughs> I'm afraid that's the way you're going to be in the morning. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Who's a cheeky little pussy then? <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, leave my pussy alone. <laughs> Are you being sir, sir? I'm Humphreys, right? Mm -hmm. Are you being sir, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain and spotty. We've also got some see-through that really tan your... Each well. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around the back. And if you'd like to fit a flat, then try a plastic bag. What? I'm Lisa, sir. I'm Humphreys and I'm free. I'm 